So I'm starting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm kind of laying down so there's more light on my face. Okay. And then I'll just shift back and forth. And then, oh man, this motherfucker better record it. This thing does the weirdest thing when I try and post shit. It like does it sideways sometimes, but I don't know. If this doesn't work out, then I'll consider it practice. Okay. How long okay. do I need to talk? Um, probably not that loud, but I'll try and talk as quiet as I can so that people aren't like deafened by me because they turned it up enough to hear you. <laughs> okay, so here's kind of the deal. We were talking about, okay, this is a story I've been working on telling for a long time. Hi. Um, Gender. Where, as a man, are you supposed to fit into what's the status quo and what's just natural and what's just embedded in your soul, basically? Yeah, exactly. And I think, I think that when we wake up to, okay, the main thing in Ishmael is waking up to how much influence culture is on reality or perceived reality. Yeah. But after I got into that for about a decade, I finally started waking up to the fact that we only imagine that we are these completely cultural beings. And in reality, human behavior is probably still 99% instinctual. Yeah. We just imagine in our heads that it and changed even, that. And even creating culture in, is instinctual in one sense. You know? That once you're comfortable, once you're you know, you're not running around with a bunch of bow and arrows, like, shooting deers to eat. You go for entertainment, and then we've been feeding that side of our human, our human ways forever, for a long time, you know? For my whole life. Yeah. You know, I've never had to live, like, purely by instinction, you know? Hmm. Or maybe I am. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't... I don't really have any comment on that right now, mostly to be completely honest, because I kind of tuned it out. Yeah. But I'm hoping that it's interesting later on when I watch it. Right. The thing I wanted to record this for is because there's a story I gotta practice telling. And I might post this on YouTube if it turns out to be a decent rendition. Okay, okay the story is the 10,000 year story of gender roles. And. I, I was trying to tell this the other day, and then after I told it, it was so animated, I wish I had recorded it, so that's why I'm trying to record this, but now that I'm on the spot, I'm kind of like, okay, I'm going to suck, and yeah. yeah. It's okay. Okay, so basically for 10,000 years, we've had this civilization, and it seemed mostly like a male project. You know what I mean? Yeah. Dominated by males, you mean? Yeah, men have always seemed to get a little more out of it and be more into it and be more of the doers of it. Yeah. Well, what happened with Rachel Carson in like 62 and Silent Spring was we kind of awoke to this idea that for the first time in our history, our project wasn't being supported by God, mm. so to speak. Right. Like the planet was rejecting our idea. Even kind of God was rejecting our idea. I mean, this is kind of getting a little fruity with it. I don't necessarily mean like God, God, literal God. Right. Kind of God maybe as an archetype in the human mind, which we won't get too far into, but basically like, let's just say that it's a human instinct to have some kind of sense of the divine okay. and the divine purpose of things and whether or not what we're doing is being sanctioned by the universe. So when Rachel Carson pointed out that what we're doing is definitely not being sanctioned by the birds and the biosphere, yeah. we started wondering what the hell we were doing. And that's when our big gender role stuff started kicking in because remember how civilization's always been this male experiment? Yeah. And women have always kind of maybe, maybe just in general through the, through the millennia gotten a little less out of it, been a little less into it. Well, as far as, like, just the fact that what's recorded, you know, what's recorded is what the men were doing. I mean, you can't really say what the women were thinking because it's all probably pertaining to the man that they were involved with, you know, if there was any. Yeah. But it's almost like if you were a woman and you were married, you were a prostitute. That was your only option, you know? 
Wow. And the whole history of prostitution, the motivations behind that too. Yeah. <clears throat> and a lot of times the motivation was to feed your kids. Yeah. You know? And the and the stuff against prostitution, like a lot of times the lower class men would be against prostitution because they didn't want the higher class men to be able to buy their women. They wanted those same women available for marriage. Right. And then the higher class women were against prostitution because they didn't want their men to be able to hire the prostitutes. Right, that's funny. Yeah, but so... the women had no say regardless, really, for a long time. Huh, yeah. Which is kind of fucked up, maybe. Yeah, obviously. Okay, so getting back to the main shtick, the story is starting with the start of environmentalism, we started questioning the goodness of masculinity generally. Because we're like, okay, masculinity has fucked the earth. We've been making all our bombs and bullets and rockets in the shapes of dicks. Yeah. <clears throat> and conquering everything. Maybe that's not so good. Maybe masculinity isn't so good. And so it's my contention that masculinity itself has been basically banished in the last 30 or 40 years. And We've tried to put it all, we've tried to saddle women with the whole thing. It's almost as if the men have thrown up their hands because everybody said, well, look what you did. You built this. You built this. You fucked everything up. And men are like, okay, uh, you know, all right, we'll go with something else. What do you think? What do you think we should do? And women are starting to take over not only feminine but masculine roles, starting to feel overburdened by the whole thing. And men are starting to feel like they have zero role. Mm. Okay, that's my theory. It's cool. That's way cool. I think too that like, I mean, what you're pointing out, like I never thought about that, that bullets and rockets are in phallus shape. You know? <laughs> that's a George Carlin phrase. The bombs and the bullets and the rockets are all shaped like dicks. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Hmm. We'll get back to this more later.